This video is going to be all about how to use plugins inside of Pro Tools. And that might seem like the craziest simple thing to know, but when you are just starting out, you have no idea. So if you are new to Pro Tools and need to figure out how to use plugins, you see plugins online for sale, then tutorials, I'm going to show you how to access them, how to insert them on your tracks, but also I'm going to show you how to use them as a kind of destructive processing technique. So it's something called audio suite. So if you're not familiar with that, maybe you've never used them in that way and you've always been putting them right on your tracks through the insert window. This is also going to help you. Hello and welcome. My name is Malcolm Ownflood. Thank you for watching. I teach audio here on YouTube. So if you like that sort of thing, please do subscribe. I would love the support. And there are two types of ways to use plugins and we're going to explore both. The first one, and we'll look at this, is using them as an insert. And that's probably how you've seen them being used in any other tutorials you've watched if you've gone down this rabbit hole already. And it's probably how you want to use them because it offers the most flexibility. It is kind of the modern workflow. But there's also something called audio suite. And we're going to explore that as well. It is destructive processing, but sometimes it makes perfect sense to go that route. So we'll explore both. I'll show you how to do both. And by the end of this video, you'll be on your way using plugins however you wish and on your way to mixing your next song. Okay, so up first, we are gonna jump into using plugins as inserts. So I've got a mix up here. Uh, this, here's a little listen if you want. Right, and now you can see there's a ton of plugins already in here. And if you are like, well, actually, I don't know that. That's what all of these little boxes are. If I click on any of these, these are our inserts. And if you look up here, it says inserts A through E and inserts F through J. So you're going to find all of these insert spots are where we can put plugins. And just to show you that in another view, this is called the mix window. It makes it even easier to see. So our inserts are now going down per track. So this is my... Uh, base track right here. And I've got a bunch of plugins on that base track. Tons of plugins in this session, actually, mixed entirely with plugins. So if you want to use plugins as an insert, simply find the track you want. So let's say we wanted to treat uh, the lead vocal. I'd go find my vocal, which is this track right here, solo it. This time and time. And say we wanted to add more reverb to that, for example. We go click on any insert, any available one. The order does make a difference because they feed into each other. They, uh, you know, are linear like that. So if you put uh, a bright EQ before a reverb, it's going to brighten that reverb. So keep that in mind. But let's say, yeah, we wanted to add more reverb. I'm going to click right on whatever slot we think is right. And then we can go through and look at our different categories here. I'm going to go with reverb, of course. And let's go with this spring reverb right here. Right. So as you see, it loaded it right up. You can hear it right away. Uh, I don't want it to be so intensely wet. So we're going to dial the mix back. Let's link them first. Right. As simple as that. Just click on an insert, find the plugin or processing type that you want, apply it mixed to taste. That is very easy. Just to show you one more time, I'll do it on this other window as well. This looks different, but it's the same thing. It's just showing us the same information in a different way. You can adjust the layout up here of this top left window where you can click to show or hide your inserts. Some people like to have it all visible here. I do myself. I actually rarely use this uh, mix window. I primarily use the edit window because I like that it also shows me our audio clips. So I can do all that stuff at the same time. But yeah, let's now, let's jump to our bass. Let's say we want to distort that. Click on an empty insert, plug in. Let's go to harmonic and let's find something nasty. Let's go with trusty Sanzam. It's a stock plugin. With my own existence, character arc that wasn't supposed to be written. You found out. Kind of sounds cool, actually. So that is using plugins as an insert. Now, the advantage of an insert is I can go back and change this anytime. I want to make that reverb more intense on that vocal. I just go find that insert, dial up the mix a little bit. I can go and edit it whenever I want. It's never committed unless we choose to commit it. But in general, we're able to leave it open so we can always come back and tweak as the mix or song develops. Very powerful. They run in real time. Now, the alternative, I mentioned that there's something called audio suite 
which is a destructive processing. And if you want to find that, you're going to head up and see that there's audio suite up in your top menu here. And a uh, uh, little story time. When I first got Pro Tools, just like Pro Tools 7, I think back then, I had no idea. I didn't know how to even change windows like this. You know, I, I just, <laughs> I, I had no idea. So I think I was on this and I don't think I could even see inserts. So I had no idea that you could even place plugins as inserts. So what I would do is use Audio Suite, which I mean, got the job done, but uh, isn't ideal either. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's show you a case of Audio Suite. Let's go to something new. Let's go to one of the keys tracks. This is our main hook synth. <laughs> Now let's say we wanted to add a delay to that. What I would do is just make a clip of it. So that's the part right there. Go up to Audio Suite. And again, you can see it kind of mirrors what it looked like when we were choosing plugins as inserts. It's got all our categories here. So I could just go to Delay, find, uh, yeah, Echo Boy Junior. That's a great plugin. My Sound Toys, love it. And now it's trickier to use though, because now when I click play, it sounds the exact same, nothing's changed. And you could see that my input and output meters here had no activity. So I'll do it again, but watch those. There's nothing happening. Right? It's just, it's not going through the plugin. The plugin's not processing it. But at the bottom here, there's a preview button. So we'll click that and you'll hear it now. Now, as that plays, I can adjust it to hear in real time how that would affect the audio. But you notice it's quieter because it doesn't use any of the gain staging or other plugins or routing that we've got. It's just that clip being sent direct to uh, the output, essentially. So it's not an ideal way to kind of listen back and be able to mix on the fly. Uh, but let's just keep going with it for a second. Then I'll tell you why you might want to use this. I kind of like that slap, you know, I probably wouldn't use it, but now really important for you to know, just doing that and hearing it, nothing's changed. Again, if I click play with the transport or space bar, it's going to go back to playing it from the region through the routing and the mix that we've kind of established, right? It doesn't have that slap delay that we had here. Crank it up. Right? You, to get that, you have to click render. So if I render, watch the file name for this keys melody clip right here. I'll make that a little bit bigger for you. Render. See that it changed it. It added something. It added Echo Boy Jr. Pretty much it's saying, hey, I just rendered this processing onto this clip. So now no matter what I do with the inserts on this track, it's always going to have that delay baked into the file. It's as if I recorded through it. That is why it's destructive. That is now printed into the file and we could do it to the whole track just by selecting the whole clip or command a will always do that for the clip that you have highlighted now the whole track is selected render that now all has that slapback delay printed onto it no matter what i do i'm going to undo that because i actually don't want that <laughs> now okay why would you want to do that instead of just use an insert that's kind of the big question here because an insert is I mean, forever tweakable. It, you can always go back and adjust it and you can automate it easier. It's easier to listen to because it goes through your routing. So it's not quiet like you just heard that was. It seems like there is no reason to use Audio Suite in the modern ability of computers to be able to handle plugins, right? Why would you do that? Well, there are instances where you want to commit and there are instances where it's kind of the only way to make sounds as well. So I'll show you my favorite example. My favorite way to use Audio Suite is to make risers and, and things like that, effects. So I, what I've done is just gone and found uh, a hell guitar chord here. Right, so I'm just going to clip that. I'm using B to trim it on each side. I actually, That might be a custom hotkey, I'm not sure. I'm going to fade it. So that it fades out a little bit quicker and shift shift option three will render that into a file so i pretty much just committed that fade it's kind of similar to audio suite but now what we've got here is just yeah a guitar fade now what i'm going to do is go to audio suite and go to other and find reverse 
and I actually have a shortcut for that up here. Click that, and I'm gonna render it, and we could preview it. Remember, you can always do that. So you heard through previewing it that it had reversed that clip. It had made this big swell. There's no way to do that with a plugin insert. You have to use something like this because if I click render here, watch this clip. Again, make it bigger for you. Render, you can see it now. We have literally made a reverse that there's, you can't do that in any other way. So that's like an, an instance of when committing is really fun. Another one is if you want to do something to a clip of audio and then be able to move it around a session really easily. So say we wanted to also add a tremolo effect to this. We'll go to modulation, find a trem plugin. I would love this one. Again, another sound toys. Well, let's just start listening. I'll mix as I go. Yep, that sounds very cool. I'm going to render it. Now you can see the trim has been rendered into there, but now I can just drag this around anywhere in the song I want. So what we could do is go to this first course here, or this last course, and there's a big break before it. And try dropping it there. I'm just gonna duplicate this track. Don't worry if you're having trouble following along with this too much. You'll just get the idea, I think, I'm sure. All right, now I'm gonna drag this down. Move it over there. And we want it to start something like this, I bet. Might want to shorten this. Maybe even back a little bit. Let's see what this sounds like with the band. Probably extend that. I think we could half this and have the fade a little more dramatic. Try one more time. This time you get the idea. It's not perfect, but like you can kind of create moments using Audio Suite, committing and like mangling clips to be something unique and then you know, manipulate them as you need, manipulate them with the plugin processing. But then once they're committed as an audio clip, you can drag them around, copy them, paste them around your session super easily, much easier than if it was on a track with plugin processing and you needed to move automation around, which is kind of more advanced than you need to know probably right now, if you're watching this particular video. So again, two types of plugin use. There is the insert route, which is what you're gonna to wanna to do 99% of the time, but that other 1% of the time, you might want to use audio suite. Now, if you want a bonus tip, something called clip effects at the bottom here. And that works very similar to audio suite, except for you don't actually have to render it. So if I grab something like, let's just go with some overheads here. If you wanted to, and you probably wouldn't, but if you wanted to, you could just grab a clip of that. Say we wanted this course to be a little brighter with clip effects open down here at the bottom. And this is, uh, I think Pro Tools 2023 and up newer, we'll have the clip effects feature. You won't have it if you have an older version. Grab the EQ and brighten it up. Now this clip is now gonna reflect that EQ curve. Or darken it. Right, so it just remembers that, but it's committed to that clip itself, not the rest of it. So you'll hear it click off when it hits this clip. Right, so you heard that shift. So you can kind of modify clip by clip using clip effect. It's a really quick way to deal with sibilance or plosives on a vocal, just kind of a third bonus way of using plugins. But you don't have all of your plugin library effect like available. It's just kind of this stock Pro Tools window, which is really useful for some things. But in general, I think you're gonna find that you're gonna be leaning to inserts almost all of the time. So experiment with Audio Suite. You can make some really cool sounds in there, but master inserts because that's how you're going to be mixing your songs i hope this helped again my name is malcolm Owenflood. thank you for watching if you enjoyed it please do subscribe and i do have a free mixing workshop available to you in the description of this video from self-recording band and podcast so do check that out if you want and another video coming up for you right here adios bye